In this tutorial, we will learn how to use face recognition to unlock a door. The system uses an ESP32 cam, a 3 volt relay module, and an electric lock. Just for the purposes of the demonstration, we're powering the camera with a USB power bank. We've got 5 volts here, and then 3 volts coming out of the camera. The white cable is the signal cable. So the 3 volts ground and the signal cable come down to the relay. The relay allows high voltages to be switched on and off. In this example, I'm using 12 volts. It comes down in the red cable. When the switch is on, it comes down to the door lock. Here you can see the relay being energized and the door unlocking. After five seconds, the signal on the white cable is set low. The relay opens and the door locks. This diagram shows the separation of the low voltage and high voltage sides of the project. On the left, you can see the five volts power supply with the ESP32 cam and on the right the power supply with the powered door lock. On the ESP32, pin 2 is set high when a face is recognised. This causes the relay to close and power to flow between the power supply and the door lock. For this project you may need to update your ESP32 hardware libraries. Make sure you have at least version 1.0.2. You will also need to install the Arduino WebSockets library. If this is your first project with the ESP32 cam, I would recommend trying first with the basic tutorial mentioned in the description below. Normally the ESP32 cam doesn't save recognised faces when the device is switched off, so any enrolled faces will be lost. For this project to work, two easy changes need to be made in the Arduino IDE to allow persistent storage. First, a new partition table needs to be added. I've created a partition table that you can download from the description below. If you downloaded the Arduino IDE from the Windows Store, you need to save the file here with your username and the version number. If you downloaded the Arduino IDE from the website, the file needs to be saved here with your username and the version number you have. Here you can see the new partition table being saved with the other partition tables. When you have copied the new partition table to your system, this option needs to be added to the boards.txt file. Again, this is in two possible locations, as you can see on the screen now. So if you open the boards.txt file, and scroll down till you find the ESP32 rover settings. In the partition settings, add this new text. If you now close and reopen the Arduino IDE, you should see the new partition scheme. Everything is now set up in the Arduino IDE. Open the Arduino sketch folder on your computer, download the sketch file from the description below, copy it to this folder and unzip it. Find the folder and open the new sketch. To upload the sketch and for general testing, you can connect the components like this. Before uploading, check that your settings are the same as these. You will need to open the serial monitor. When the sketch is finished uploading, check in the serial monitor for the IP address.
Paste this IP address into your browser. The interface should open and you will see the video streaming. To add people to the system, type their name and click Add User. Each face capture requires four samples. If you want to remove someone from the system, click the X next to their name. Now click Access Control and the system is ready to recognize faces and open the door. Here's a quick run through of the code to help with understanding the project. These are the libraries that we're using. This is the Wi Fi connection details. Here's the camera that we've selected. We're using WebSockets for the communication between the, the browser and the ESP32. Here's some variables that we need. This is all camera stuff, face recognition settings. Looking at some of the functions in the sketch, this one loads existing faces from the ESP32 when it starts up. This one is enrolling new faces, saving faces to the ESP32. This one uses WebSockets to send the list of faces to the browser. This deletes all faces uh, from the browser and from the ESP32. This function is called when a WebSocket message is received from the browser. Depending on the contents of the message, various variables are set or functions are called. And finally, in the loop, the WebSocket stuff is set up here. When the client is available, i.e. when the browser is connected, this while loop runs continuously. In the while loop, there's a variable. Depending on the value, different functions and uh, other variables are set. Finally, the send binary is sending the frame buffer or the image from the video camera to the browser. Also in the Arduino IDE are two more tabs. Camera index. So this data here is actually the HTML that the ESP32 sends to the browser. I'll explain this in a minute. And these are the different settings for the different cameras that will work with the ESP32 libraries. So as mentioned, here's the HTML code for the interface. It's the CSS here, the HTML, and then we have the JavaScript. In the JavaScript, there's the code for setting up WebSockets. Here's the buttons. Have a little function for creating a sound. The data sent from the ESP32 to the browser using WebSockets can come in two different formats. It can either be in string format, depending on the content of the string, different functions and other things happen, or it can be in blob format. This is actually the video data. The buttons have on-click events attached to them. When the button is clicked, the WebSocket sends this text to the ESP32. This tutorial is a basic demonstration of a simple access control system. The face recognition works well considering the price of the module, but it doesn't match more expensive systems. For example, the system can be easily tricked with a photograph as there is no liveness detection. At the moment, a bug in the Arduino libraries means a face is always recognized. This is fixed in the IDF versions, so it might be fixed in the Arduino releases when you watch this video. Please see the blog post in the description below for code updates.